Pierre. Your dream, madam. Pee-pee. Water. Woman. Like until it was all. Certain island! Number three, you wait on... Hey everyone, welcome to the Movie in Minutes channel. Today, we've got a quick rundown of the movie swept away for you. This story kicks off with a bunch of rich couples getting ready for a vacation together. They're all set to sail from Greece to Italy on a ship. But right from the start, it's obvious that the ship isn't up to snuff for the New York women in the group. Especially Amber, who's married to Tony, the beg shop behind a pharmaceutical company. She's not shy about voicing her disappointment. A young sailor named Jeb gets stuck escorting Amber to her cabin. And boy, does he get an earful of her snootiness. When she sees the sorry excuse for a gym on board, just a portable exercise machine and a jump rope, she throws a fit. Jeb does his best to hold his tongue, but the captain isn't bothered. He figures the cash they're getting paid makes up for any inconvenience, so he keeps buttering up the rich customers while the travelers hang out on deck. They start chatting about the ethics of the pharmaceutical business. Amber boldly claims that it's not their job to take care of sick people, just to sell them meds. Jep's pretty shaken by her attitude, but tries not to let it show. Amber keeps disrespecting him, messing up his name and demanding stuff like water. She keeps at it throughout the trip, insulting him and reminding him she's paying for his services. Jep tries to keep his cool, but he can't help imagining ways to get back at her. After a wild party, Amber wakes up to find her friends off in boats exploring caves. She orders Jep to get a boat ready for her, but he warns her it's too late and risky. But she won't listen, and things start to take a dangerous turn. But because she's so stubborn and wants to keep putting down the sailor, Amber won't hear any objections. Jep follows her orders, and they head out to sea in the boat. Once they are a good distance from the ship, the motor suddenly stops. Amber keeps on with her harsh remarks, demanding they start the boat again. But this time, Jeb can't do a thing, even if he wanted to. The current is pulling the boat away, and night is creeping in. Despite the chilly air, Amber puts on a fishy-smelling sweater and starts treating Jeb with respect, finally getting his name right. In the boat, they find a rocket launcher, and they could use it to signal for help. But when a yacht appears, Amber tries to take charge and pretends everything's fine. She ends up puncturing one of the boat's cylinders instead. As night falls, a thunderstorm hits, and they cling to what's left of the boat, halfway submerged. Luckily, they spot land on the horizon. Once ashore, Amber still tries to boss Jep around with threats of lawyers. But he takes his time, exploring the uninhabited island. Seeing his chance, he starts getting back at her for all the humiliation she's put him through. He gathers trash from the ocean and turns it into useful stuff. Meanwhile, Amber's just wandering around, lost. When Jep catches a fish and cooks it, Amber can't help but envy him. She tries to intimidate him at first, then offers him a ton of money for half of the fish. But Jep won't budge, calling her out for her rudeness. He tells her she can earn her share by becoming his maid. Amber's furious, but she's got no other choice. She's gotta play by his rules now. She ends up washing all of the boy's clothes, even his underwear, and treats him like he's the boss. But even after all that, Peppy doesn't rush to reward her. He finds a small shed on the island that used to be a shelter for stranded folks. Amber's relieved to have a roof over her head at last, but the door slams in her face, and she's back to sleeping on the ground in her fish-smelling sweater. Days go by, but nobody comes looking for them. They try to have dinner together, but Peppy keeps laying down the law with his spoiled girlfriend, sometimes taking it too far. At one point, he even asks her to dance to some music, trying to lighten the mood. But their fights escalate, and Peppy tries to physically claim Amber. At the last minute, though, he backs off, promising that she'll fall for him eventually, and beg for his attention. And sure enough, it doesn't take long. After some time alone, Amber starts warming up to Peppy. She sits at his feet, and things get heated between them. Life on the island starts looking up, with Amber getting used to their new routine of cleaning, fishing, and cooking over a fire. One day, while she's out gathering firewood, she spots a yacht nearby. At first, she's about to yell for help, but then she hides behind a rock, and the yacht sails off without noticing them. Later, around the campfire, she doesn't mention what happened, but talks about feeling happy for the first time. 
Still, she knows Peppy would probably pay more attention to a younger woman if given the chance. The lovers enjoy a few more blissful days on the island until a yacht shows up in the bay once again, catching Peppy's attention this time. Amber asks him to stay hidden, afraid that returning to the outside world will ruin their relationship. But Peppy disagrees. He wants Amber to prove her love through actions, not just words. He challenges her to choose between him and her husband. When they board the yacht filled with people as wealthy as herself, Amber hesitates to answer the tourists' questions. Upon arriving at the port, they are greeted by Tony, Amber's husband, who's been holding onto Hope all this while. He thanks Beppy for saving his wife, holding onto Amber with one hand, unable to bear the tension. Peppy silently leaves, refusing the expensive hotel room offered as gratitude. Instead, he sits at a bar with a drink. Amber's family lawyer approaches him, offering a bag of money as thanks. Peppy pushes the lawyer away but accepts the money, using it to buy an expensive ring with a huge stone. He calls the hotel where Amber is staying, pouring out his feelings, but ends the call abruptly upon hearing her husband is nearby. Amber asks Peppy to decide the fate of their relationship and leave a note with the hotel receptionist. In the note, Peppy instructs Amber to meet him at the port, behind the ship, to start a new life together. He leaves the note with the receptionist, warning not to let anyone but Amber see it. However, Tony notices something off about his wife's behavior and stays by her side. When Amber asks if there's a letter for her, Tony intervenes, and the receptionist hands her a seemingly unimportant envelope. Back in her room, Amber packs her bags, still hoping Peppy will show up. Tony, realizing his wife is missing, intercepts the letter and boards a helicopter with Amber, who's none the wiser. As they load their bags, Tony discreetly hands the envelope with the port address to a worker. Peppy receives a letter stating their relationship is over, supposedly from Amber. He rushes to the runway, but the helicopter ascends, carrying a tearful Amber who never had the courage to change her life. Shouting her name, Peppy tosses the engagement ring into the ocean. And that's how the movie ends. If you like this video, subscribe and hit like for more content like this.